Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Masculine Mastery Summit. It's wonderful to be here today and to be joined with founder of the Gene Keys, Richard Rudd. He's a mystic, a poet, uh, an incredible man. So thank you for being here, Richard. Appreciate you. Very happy to be here. Yeah, there's there's a lot on the table right now as far as the way in which I would like to steer this conversation and 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 you know bring you into the mix because I mean I like I was telling you offline there's so many different avenues in which I would love to explore with you but of course we have to kind of condense some of that wisdom and information into into a segment that I feel would be very beneficial for the men that are listening to that and one of those topics that you know keeps popping up and of course this is within the collective consciousness and there's different spins and takes on it but around prosperity and so i guess just to start the conversation you know what is prosperity and second to that what i love that you talk about is the connection between breath and prosperity so maybe what is prosperity and then the connection between breath and prosperity if you want to open up there and and we'll go from there yeah thanks christopher and welcome everyone <clears throat> It's a great question, prosperity, especially for, for a male audience. Um, I think, you know, when I started my, um, I'm, you'll have to forgive me, but I've got a bit of a, um, I'm getting over a, a fluey thing. I'm, I'm out of it, but I still, you know, and sometimes it lingers in your chest. So I might need to <clears throat> occasionally do that. Not a problem. Um, um, uh, yeah, I, I started a long contemplation on prosperity. Um, for one of my programs called the Pearl, and um, and I thought and and I really considered it over like a, several months. Actually, I was like, well, what what is it really? What is it for? What is it for me? And I kind of honed it down and down and down and down and down until I got it down to <clears throat> two things. Really, the first was like the ability to make fire. Right, that that for me was like what it means to truly prosper and it's what kind of allowed humans to kind of accelerate away from all other creatures if you like um in terms of our development and brain development and everything and so <clears throat> that ability to make fire out of whatever's in our environment is an incredibly symbolic but also literal powerful thing and one of the first things I did when I realized that is I, I got hold of a friend of mine because uh, I didn't know how to do that. I'd never done that. And I and a bushcraft guy. And I said, can you teach me how to make fire from what is in my garden? You know, and he came over and we spent like half a day and and he showed me how to do it. And then he let me do it, you know, without showing me. <clears throat> and it was really powerful. And um, and I managed to do it by the by after only several hours you know and, and and then suddenly i had the little ember and then i had the fire and ever since that moment my life has been different because before that moment i was walking around not knowing that and now i know that i will always know that and i carry that so it, it's very symbolic at many levels and the other thing i reduced it to prosperity is breathing breath you know, breath is like the spiritual fire, the the celestial fire, the cosmic fire, the soul fire that we have inside us, um, spiritu. Um, and um, and so I coined this phrase, borrowed it, you know, and coined it, um, pros, uh, what is it? Um, er, yeah, spiro ergo prospero. You know, I breathe, therefore I prosper. Because I think if you if you can really breathe. If you're really breathing well and deeply and rhythmically, then you have everything you need, actually, um, in that moment. You may not have resources in that moment. There may be chaos going on around you, um, whatever. But you have your breath, uh, and that breath is, is your connection to your eternal nature. And that eternal nature, is the, that's the ember of the fire that is true prosperity. And, and that you know, that just sets the scene. So I'll pause there and let you, if you want me to go deeper, but I think that's kind of my opening gambit. 
Yeah, I, I absolutely, well, one, I appreciate it from multiple levels. Number one, as a breathwork facilitator, somebody that has been working with the breath consciously and intentionally for, you know, a decade plus that right there, that little piece of what you just mentioned is pure gold and something that I feel anybody listening shouldn't underestimate that, you know, in the sense that what. I feel you're getting to aside from the idea of what prosperity is and, and breathing is to prosper. It's to be alive in this human experience as well. And it's a gift, right? And also to your fire analogy and what you've mentioned there and the power that fire holds, right? And, and you mentioned this idea that it separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom and what can we do with fire, right? And, and the amount of, uh, things that we can do with just that precious and sacred element. So I really appreciate you opening it up in, in that capacity. And so mm. a couple other things that, you know, having gone down the Pearl path and, and going through that sequence, you know, there's been some key words that you've mentioned, you know, collaboration, connection, being of service to the whole. These are all part of sort of this new paradigm of, maybe how we're looking at prosperity, because I think a lot of times when we think about prosperity, we're thinking simply from maybe just a financial perspective. And of course, you know, that includes that. However, prosperity is much broader than that, as we've already kind of alluded to in this conversation. So maybe just diving deeper into sort of the intricacies of, of prosperity and how you view it. Yeah, I think, you know, it was funny for me because I created these out of my Gene Keys work. I, I created over the years these three programs. <clears throat> Those other programs. But these are the kind of main programs called the Golden Path. And the first one's about purpose. The second one's about partnership or love. And the third one is about prosperity. And they're sequences and they unravel naturally in that sequence. Um although now I've changed it so that you can come in from anywhere, which is, um, a, there's another story behind that. But um, originally, I, you know, the p p finding your true purpose, you know, the purpose, uh, your higher purpose, um, and what that is, that's linked to what we were just talking about, breath. Because for me, anyway, your true sense of purpose is not something that you're here to do. It's not about doing. Doing can emerge from it. But doing will always then come back into it, into not doing, you know, so your purpose is something beyond doing and not doing. It's the part of you that's at rest, that's at peace inside yourself. It's that gap between the breaths. It's that deep rhythm that we have when we're connected to nature and we're connected to our surroundings and when we are collaborating with nature and others. and. So that, you know, that that's kind of that starts with purpose. So once you've anchored yourself in that sense of kind of deep inner rhythm, <clears throat> you know, your breath, the ability to make fire. Then the next phase is partnership or, pros or you know, uh, you know, this is an, this is the next phase of prosperity. Purpose is the first. And then the next blossoming, which is in a way the the hardest is love. Um, because doing love work involves relationship work, um, which is tough. <laughs> and there are not really many teachings out there because it's a wild path. It's a tantric path. It's a wild path. It's, you have to make it up as you go along. Yes, there are people who've gone before you um, who may leave you some kind of signposts. Uh, but essentially, you're kind of on your own navigating the path of the heart and you and we're and we're digging out traumas and we're healing them in our heart and we're coming back into the softness and the you know the vastness of our heart and and then the third part of this of my program anyway, is called is prosperity is the one we mentioned called the pearl and so originally we put it on and in i i asked people to do it in that order <laughs> and it was really funny because all the men wanted to do the third part on prosperity and all the women wanted to do the second part on love and relationships. And, and I even called them after Venus, you know, the middle one was called Venus sequence. And the third, the pearl is, is about the male, some of the male so-called planets, Jupiter and Mars. <clears throat> anyway. Um, 
So, but there's truth in it because for true prosperity to dawn, you know, around us in terms of resources to come our way, money, um, you know, skills, collaborations, relations, the kind of people we need, partnerships that we need to build our vision. In order for that to happen, we have to have done our heart work first, really. And, and in order to do our heart work in relationships, in order to not get caught in codependent patterns, we have to have done our purpose work because otherwise we don't have that ground in ourself, in our aloneness, so that we don't get pulled off, um, you know, our purpose by a codependent pattern. Now, we might, we might at times, of course we do. But then generally, that purpose that we build is where is how we build this resilience inside us that enables us to then deal with the relationship work and open the heart, which opens in layers gradually. It takes time, obviously. And then finally, as the heart begins, so it's not like it happens in a sequence, it happens all at once. You know, so as the heart's opening, the prosperity is arriving, you know, because the, we're opening up the fractal, uh, you know, synchronicity field, all of that stuff, you know, the geometry that connects us to our true destiny, our dharma. And, and that's where prosperity arrives from. It arrives finally from collaboration. You're absolutely right. Um, I'm in a position now in my life of really witnessing it, you know, because I started alone on my path in my garden with the fire, that little ember, just me. And then I built and built and built and I've done all this relationship work in my life. And and now, now I'm doing the work within a collective, which is the which is the big dawning. Um, and you can't separate those things together. You can't really separate, you know, purpose you know partnership and prosperity they're all wound together so it's a it's a beautiful um story and and symbiosis but I, I think it's it's a lot to expect and it's not realistic to think you can get the prosperity if you haven't done the hard work <laughs> if you have if you know if you've got crap relationships you know and it's not working for you you're not going you you might make millions you know but that's not prosperity you know it's like you don't you because you won't know what to do with them you know, you won't know who to give them to or who to work with or who to collaborate because you're, you've isolated yourself away, you know, by not doing that heart work. Because when you do the heart work, that's when everything opens up. That's when a community begins to open up to you and around you. Um, and whatever is inside you starts to network itself together with the purposes of others, you know, who are also, you know, looking for someone like you. Um, in fact, they're looking for precisely you um, in an almost predetermined way, I would say. So when we do this in a work, then prosperity is a byproduct. It's not something we actually have to work at and do workshops on. And, you know, it just comes, but it comes in a mysterious ways, you know, um, which is another bit of a story. But anyway, I'll pause there. <laughs> Hope that's answered your question a little bit oh i'm i'm smiling because number one i i can just attest to the work that you're speaking to you know i've gone through the venus sequence several times now and on this last time around going through it and of course as we know the onion peels in layers so you're getting more deeper insights breakthroughs that are happening as you're going through it and i remember sitting in my sphere of my eq uh jinky 36 and I remember just this well of, of, well, the shadow of turbulence, but this well of anger bubbling up to the surface and having to really, really open up into this space of my, my humanity. And from there spiraled several key events in my life over this past year, specifically of a lot of grief, um, a lot of heartache, a lot of, you know, deep, deep emotions, right. That were just buried down there. And I, I remember just crying for two, three hours at a time, just uncontrollably, but allowing this energy to come out. And over this past month, and the reason this conversation specifically, you know, around prosperity and, and of course, everything else we're speaking to is really resonant to me is because I can see now the opportunities and people in the fractal line now coming together 
as I've done some of this work, and of course it's continuously unfolding, but seeing how these pieces mysteriously, but perfectly are woven together and now showing up in my life. So I just, I just wanted to share a personal experience there because it's, it's truly magical and, and powerful transformative work. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's when you start that fire, you know, that, from that little ember inside your aloneness and then you fan it and you fan that love and you fan it and you fan it and your purpose starts to come through that love. Then you kind of, you are creating a wildfire. You're creating something that just spreads and then, and then kind of the passion that's and the creativity that it can come out of you is then what attracts everyone else you know because it's a very alluring energy field that um it's you know the 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 field of initiative um you know entrepreneurship you know that's coming that every single person has inside them once we kind of have the courage to do that in a work but man it takes you know let's not kind of it's tough <laughs> it's it's like and we often don't get a chance or have a you know when we're young when we need a mentor or a guide uh, especially men young men um we obviously we don't often have that we don't we don't necessarily find that easily um i was very fortunate that i had that so um it helped me kind of you know come into that creativity inside my own self mm. A question that's arising for me as as we're speaking about this, and it it pertains to the heart work, which to me is arguably the most important work there is. You know, having explored this temple within, right within within here, and and I know there's a lot of perhaps hesitancy um, and reservations around going into the heart, specifically for men, right? Because we've been so cut off from this this space. It's been very much living from the headspace. So is there anything that you feel called to share for a man listening to this that maybe has some some resistance to going into the heart and why? If, I mean, you already spoke to the why it's important, but anything else you feel called to share there, I think could be helpful. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I think I have a real, I was thinking about this before I came on. I was thinking, what is the, you know, to myself, what what kind of, what might be an uh, an important thing I've learned that I could share, um, and um, it's about commitment for me. And you know, because in my I live a I live a charmed life um, in a way, and I'm surrounded by um, you know I'm a heterosexual male, but I'm surrounded by beautiful, amazing women. And I love working with women. I love working with men, but I, you know, I love working with women. And so, um, everywhere I go are these powerful, beautiful women, and they're all looking for men. You know, and I'm and and I I I've, I've been married, and I've been married to my wife for like almost twenty five years. So I'm I'm you know I'm very kind of committed, there, devoted, even I'd say, and. And I and I feel for the for the men because I hear these stories and I you know from my friends and then um, and I just want to kind of say to men like resilience is really key in a relationship because you've got to dig in and you, you know it's like there are I do you're look put it like this there are rogues and there are wolves right and rogues by rogue I mean like you don't want to be with one person you just want to be a rogue you know and maybe you maybe people have a a time where they're a rogue as well but some people just are rogues for the, their whole life some men are just like that some women are like that some men are like that and if you're a rogue be a rogue you know just and you know i don't know what that's like because i'm not one i have a roguish nature at times but i am not that so i can't speak to that but then there are wolves and wolves have a variety of possibilities they can whine they can growl they can howl right and i feel like sometimes we get stuck in whining um if you're in a relationship and 
sometimes a growl and a howl is needed, you know, um, and the howl is sometimes a howl of frustration, or it could just be a howl of passion or exasperation, you know, um, or humor even, you know, where, where, where just because you're dealing with, a, you know, you're dealing with a, with a partner and, and, you know, whoever they are, whether they're male or female, you're dealing with a chemistry that is unpredictable um, and you can't control. <laughs> so, and especially if you're dealing with a female, a, a feminine essence, let's say, because then it could be in a man or a woman, um, you're dealing with a very uh, unpredictable, um, beautiful kind of exquisite nature. And, it, it, you know, for the male, for the men, it's like, why, you know, why, why do, why do you have to behave like that? Why do you have to say, why do you have to like, why is, you know, and, and you want them to kind of settle or be relaxed or wh whatever it is you want. And yet, you know, the, the, the feminine essence is, is marvelous. It's, it's beautiful in its own majesty, just being what it is. And, and so as a, as a man, I would say we have to stay with it and have the resilience to stay with it. Now, obviously, that comes with some provisos, you know, and, but, but if, you, if you're digging a well, you dig it in one place and you keep going down in the same place. If you're digging lots of little, you know, narrow wells, you're not going to get down to the water table if you keep moving. You've got to stay in one place and dig deep. And that that's really powerful that's all i can say but that's my way um so it may not be everyone's way but um it's just it get goes on getting richer and richer but you have to go through you have to kind of put aside the whining <laughs> you know it's like you know it might be a phase and you but, but it's like you have to be bigger than that um you have to be infinitely patient infinitely forgiving you have to be completely illogical because nothing that happens in a committed relationship has, it makes any sense. And, and you're dealing with a mystery, a living mystery day by day. And, and you're dealing with issues that come out of nowhere and you've never conceived. And, but you need that fire, that passion to keep you there. So I, I, you know, that I hear about like, I, I hear about some of these beautiful women who I meet um, and they've met men and then I next see them six months or a year or two later and it's not work. Right. And I just feel like, who was that guy? Bring him to me now. You've let this being, this creature slip through your fingers. Are you mad? You are never going to find anything as exquisite or beautiful as this. You know, you got to dig in and stay the course. And and so that's kind of I think that's a really important message, um, because we have all these expectations, and yeah, we maybe have to go through a few disappointments first, uh, and that's fine, you know, at the beginning of our journey. But at a certain point, if you don't dig in, and for the long term, um, you're never going to get those that harvest, you know. Because it, it, all it does, a relationship, you know, is it tempers the steel of your boundaries and your heart over and over and over again until your blade is so sharp and you know yourself so well and you know your vulnerability in your heart and your, you know, and you have to forgive yourself and the other over and over and over again. You know? And so I, you know, for me, um, that kind of vesica pisces between two beings with the third arising you know the chemistry field itself the dharma of the relationship is a, is a is an incredible thing is incredible yeah but there'll be times where you literally you you need to go and talk to your mates and just kind of offload like how insane this person is <laughs> and and just because they will understand and they'll go, yeah, 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 but stay with it, you know, <laughs> if you can. And of course, it doesn't always work out that way. And um, but it's a principle I think that I hold, and I I feel like younger men especially 
um, need to kind of embrace that at some point. And I know there are all kinds of experimental relationships and things around at the moment, um, but I'm not really talking to them. Um, and I can't really talk to them because I've never, other than sort of dilly dallies when I was younger, I've never experienced those things. So I don't really know. I, I can't offer advice or guidance. I only know what I know. <laughs> so I don't know if that's helpful. Hopefully no, someone. It's, I, but so I think commitment it... is what I'm saying. And and I'll just finish by saying, I think you, you may have heard this if you did the Venus sequence, like 100% commitment is necessary. And 99%, this is my mentor told me this once, um, a, a very amazing old elder. Um, he said 99% commitment is the same as 1% commitment. I was like, what? That really, th- that really got me. I was like, you know how, how we always keep a little bit back in reserve? Just in case, then uh, just in case another one better comes along, you know. And so that's you know, and you have to get to that hundred percent commitment because hundred percent commitment becomes devotion. If you don't have hundred percent commitment, you never hit the frequency of devotion, you know. And devotion is where the game utterly changes, you know, because you're no longer in a relationship with another being before you know being you know you're now in a relationship with with the divine or with the whole and that's you know that's where you get all your energy back but it takes years i think to get there <laughs> anyway and it's some things it's, to consider it's the commitment to to everything you're speaking to not only this person but to yourself to the shadows that arise and the opportunities that are available in those shadows, right? And as you've always preached and shared, yeah. it's the idea of the shadows, you know, are the gateway to our gifts. And I think through what you're saying, through that commitment, you are able to dig deep into that, those spaces and then come and rise up into a greater, more embodied whole version of oneself. Yeah. And it's juicy, you know. I have this friend of mine, Swami. He's a Swami. He's a he's a monk, um, an Indian monk, and Swami Chidananda is a beautiful man. We have these conversations sometimes, uh, you know. And I'm so glad I'm not him. <laughs> he's so, you know, he he's traveling a different path, and I love it. And I I've probably been a monk in so many lives, and um, but he like. It's like it comes back to me of like I've really chosen a path that suits me because it's so rich with life, and and so is his actually, but in a completely different way. Um, because I pluck my harvest from my relationships, and um, and particularly my intimate relationship with my wife, and um, and he obviously does it on the inner planes, but also through his his friends and connections and stuff. But it's a it's like it's important it's like that you've got to make your decision like it's like you're either if you're a rogue be a damn rogue properly fully you know if you're a monk be a monk fully you can't be both you know you can't be this transcendent la om kind of person if you're in a committed relationship not easily because you're gonna they're going it's going to push you off that kind of parapet you're standing on you're going to fall and you but you're going to be constantly free falling you know so it's a very it's you're going to be a passionate being you know and it's the the path of relationship the path of love as the great love poets and the sufis are the best have always testified you know it's a crazy crazy wild person's path (laughs) yeah as you can tell i I kind of know what I want and where I'm going. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all perfect. It's all perfect. It wasn't always and this it's... way, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely necessary for, for this conversation. And I feel like, you know, there's, there's many things that you've mentioned thus far and, and things that I feel are absolutely applicable to the conversation that we're having and where men are at right now. And, you know, another piece of this, which it's almost like we're I'm backtracking through the sequences. We're starting to talk about prosperity. Now we talk about love. Now we talk about purpose and maybe we'll circle back around fully. You know, this idea that you mentioned around purpose, right? So purpose partnership equals then, you know, 
prospering into, you know, oneself and, and one's Dharma and so forth. So I really love the way you speak about purpose because it's much different than what people assume when they hear purpose, right? They hear doing, they hear a vocation of sorts, you know, whatever, but what's maybe break that down a little bit of what you perceive purpose as and how maybe the gene key sets up purpose um, for someone to discover that inner blossoming, um, that inner essence from within. Yeah, it does. It really does. Like the, in, in the, the, on my most po- in gene keys, the most popular program you probably know is the activation sequence program, which is about purpose and genius. And, uh, and it's the first one that most people do and come to and, and it's a simple little narrative structure to it, as you know, which is challenge, breakthrough, core stability. And then your gene keys are threaded along that, and your gene keys are kind of codes that are unique to you. So they, they tell you what's your narr- your specific narrative um, of of kind of landing in your purpose. And um, at, and at the top is your life's work. Um, so that is about activity. It's about what you're here to do. You know, so that key, like my key there is imagination and illumination, you know, and the shadow there is confusion, you know, which has been a deep part of my life of, you know, um, and not knowing, you know, who I was and where to go and what to do with it all. And But eventually, um, yeah, now I'm doing that. But then the purpose is kind of something that we have to kind of sink into. It's it. I had a nice sort of understanding of it the other day. It's like when we talk about hitting our zenith, you know, the the highest point of who we are, I kind of realized our zenith is something we drop into rather than being something we attain. It's something we drop down into. And it's because it's right in the core of our being. It's in our belly. You know, it's, it's deep in our solar plexus is our, is our core purpose. It's like, and it doesn't matter who you are or what your keys are, or any of that. The real purpose, uh, we all have the same purpose, which is we already talked about breath. And the real purpose is, is being, is just to be, actually, is to be, is to be here. Like Ramdas said, be here now. Those words are the words of a person living their purpose really deeply. Be here now. And and they're almost you could almost kind of see them as one word or one tone that word om if you could break it down it would be saying be here now om be here now be here now and that's what our breath is reminding us constantly just be here now be here now and and from that's the core then that's the egg that's the over out of which all our life is born so we've got to sink down into that place and we get there through challenge and breakthroughs. So we get there through kind of seeing what's in the way of us revealing of, of us having our purpose, getting to our purpose. We have to see what's in the way. So in order to kind of really know our purpose as being, we actually have to do some battles. <laughs> you know, There's some warrior work to do inside us uh, because there's a lot of stuff in the way of like, well, I wish I did this and I want to do this. And I have, you know, all our dreams and everything, which are, which are great. And our intentions and principles and values and all of that, they're all emerging from this still point deep in the belly where our purpose lives as being. And when you're in that still point, there's a part of you that truly, as I can just attest to this, it truly doesn't care what happens. I mean, it really doesn't care what happens. And if you can sit in that place, then even, you know, like, so I, I have that place inside me, but it's very deep. But I also, just above it, what emanates from it are intentions and wishes and desires and thoughts and ideas. And so they all emanate from that place of, I don't really care what happens <laughs> because, because I am this. I am here now in my purpose. And that ground of our being is the thing, you know, that's the core. That's, we call that in Gene Keys in the path, it's called the path of core stability. And that's where our purpose lives. And there is a word that's connected to each one of our purposes. And there's a shadow that also gets in the way. Like my particular one is Gene Key um, 
five. And that's impatience or restlessness. Um, and that's, so that's what gets in the way. Every time I kind of want something to be different from the way it is, you know, because there's a part of me that's just restless. There's a restless energy at times. And I have to sink past that and just go, I know that shadow. And I'm going to drop under it and behind it and into it. And then I come to patience. And then deeper than even than patience is timelessness. That's the city. That's the highest expression of my purpose is to sit in timelessness and to watch my life um, from a place of timelessness. You know, and that sounds like I'm not doing anything by it. There's loads happening. <laughs> but at the core is that still point. And it's really amusing to me that it doesn't care. <laughs> it's, it, it, do, you know what I mean? do you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> it's a powerful mm. thing to discover. There's something I mean, you mentioned it, it in there. Cares. It cares. It does through love but it doesn't care how it's 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 surrendered you know it's like mm. a part of us that's utterly surrendered to the dance of life mm. so when i say it doesn't care it's not like if someone's suffering in front of you it's not that you don't care or feel that it's just that there's a part of you that doesn't have an agenda and that's powerful Well, and I believe, you know, many of us humans were living from a sense of, well, at least the ego sense of us is living with hidden agendas all the time of figuring out what it is, again, we need to do. And there's a, there's a key word that you mentioned, many key words that you mentioned there. One of them was the warrior's path of having to go through these challenges and having to go through these breakthroughs, these Satori type of moments. And it's this constant spiral to unlock the keys to the purpose that's sitting within you, right? As you mentioned within the solar plexus and that path alone of, and I, I, I believe for all of us, right? As we're in this human experience, it's to experience what it means to be fully alive. And that's surfing that pain and pleasure threshold and moving in these different teachings and lessons that come our way. And, and for me, it speaks directly because my, uh, my life's work is 38 and then 39, of course, being the evolution then 48 and 21. And so it's like the perseverance to go through these challenges and then arrive and then go through the challenge and arrive, you know? So it's this dance that's continuously happening. So that really spoke to me. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, yeah. In regards to, so, you know, we spoke about love partnership, talking about the heart space, just spoke about core stability and purpose and really continuously moving through our, our life's journey and this hero's journey that we're all on. And of course, now bringing it back full circle, we arrive back into this space of, of prosperity where we are aligned with the people, the opportunities, the fractal lines that are here, that we're here to serve and us or them to serve us, I guess, and lack of better terms, and, and really for us to be of service to the whole. And I really want to break that down a little bit because that in itself, um, you know, I remember one key thing of reading in the, in the Pearl sequence is that when we're of service to the whole, we're actually service to ourselves because, well, we're all one organism at the end of the day. So can you speak to this idea of service to the whole and this being like a really important question of contemplation for all of us? Yeah, it's such a great question, isn't it? How can I be of the greatest service to the whole? You know, that's a question to build a life around. Um, and it's a changing, it's a changing answer, you know, I think, um, because you have to keep responding to that question. And um, you, it's a, it's a continual mystery to me anyway, living according to that question, because I keep dropping deeper into it and finding more hidden layers. And initially, I think I've thought that being of service to the whole was going to be like, you know, solving some problems or righting some wrongs in the world and 
bringing awareness to injustices and those kind of things and uh, helping people awaken or, you know, anything that's like, those are all very noble things. Um, but I've, I've kind of over the years dropped a bit deeper and I realized that there are subtler layers um, to it. It comes a little bit from that question of that part of us that doesn't care how things go because there's an inherent trust in the whole and the way the whole is moving and rippling and dancing. And so in a way, that deeper level of prosperity, we see it a lot in animals, actually. I've I've noticed it a lot in creatures and, and nature and stuff because it's play. And it's like, we see how you know we if we're watching if we're alert you see that creatures you we you know scientists have this tendency to go oh yes they're 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 practicing for hunt for the hunt later in their life or whatever and that's there may be truth to that but also even the adults play you know they play with the kids or they play you know or or they just they delight in their bodies and their environment like the octopus flicking its tentacles you know, just for the hell of it, because it likes seeing the fish run away. Um, and you see, it, you see it a lot in nature, even like mundane, silly things. I think the flies are playing with us a lot of the time you know, <laughs> when they keep landing on us, you know, and then we brush them away and they come back. And I, I think they're teasing us, you know, I think they're just bringing us into the now. And, and, I, and I see this a lot in, and I realize, I, I've come to realize that, you know, prosperity is kind of is is very linked to play, to being able to you know, and and that means ha, that means kind of embracing the the child inside us and being vulnerable in that way, um, and and to be able to laugh, you know, and to be able to cry and to all those you know to have those languages. But um, yeah, I, I think that's a really key part of you know, the art of prosperity, because we, we often think that it's about um, success, you know, and I did a talk a while ago, prosperity without success, cause a few shocks. You know? People said, well, how can you have prosperity without success? <laughs> it was deliberate kind of prov- provocational statement. Um, of course you can, you know, the, the success in terms of the ladder um, and achievement and attainment. So, uh, you know, it's, how can I be of the greatest service to the whole can actually be quite a simple thing often. It can come back to the simplicity of breath and how we breathe and how we are in every moment, you know, with the creatures around us, with the people around us, with ourself in our aloneness. You know, you might think in your aloneness, you're not being of any service to the whole because you're not doing anything. But actually, it's there that you may be doing the most. <laughs> you know, if you're breathing in deep rhythm with the whole, you're actually, you're actually empowering the whole more to be itself. You're becoming, you know, you're, you're aligning yourself with the trajectory more strongly that's inside you of what nature wants you to do for her, you know, together with her. You know, and especially at this, these times where we don't really know what to do because the world is spiraling out of control in lots of different ways. It's even more important to come into that stillness and find that deep rhythm of the breath and that fire in the belly that kind of is quite content just to sit here right now and to trust that the next moment will take care of itself. And that I will show up fully for that moment, but I don't yet know in what way. Um, yeah, so I I think there's some you know I, I I'm I'm kind of as I'm getting older I'm I'm coming kind of spiraling back to like some of my early teachers who were Taoists like real Taoists Chinese and masters and stuff that I studied with, and um, and I kind of get their they that they. they you know, their language, they come back to reducing everything to simplicity. And I'm realizing some of the most heightened experiences I've ever had are just sitting with my friends, drinking tea or having a deep conversation or sitting in silence. Like I did this very morning, 
with my neighbor friend who dropped around for tea. You know, I have this kind of policy with my friends that I'm always drinking tea at 6 a.m. in my little veranda and there's a garden door and I, and I just say to like anyone, my friends, especially my male friends, I say, you want to show up, just show up. I've always got two cups. You want to come and sit with me and contemplate. It's a beautiful thing just to watch the dawn. And we, you know, Anyway, so he showed up this morning by surprise. And we always sit there in silence for like, maybe 30 40 minutes and then you know and we drink some tea together and we watch the sky and it's those are some of the deepest sharings and friendships you can ever have when you go to that level um and and you're being of huge service i mean prayers just kind of pour out of me in, inwardly you know I, not even through words i just feel myself as a prayer as an you know to kind of heal the world and to trust the world and to trust everything that's happening to the world. And you're literally filling yourself with that, you know, that knowing. That, I, I sometimes call it cellular certainty, that everything is okay. And everything is moving exactly as it needs to. And that even if things go utterly pear-shaped and there's earthquakes and sky is opening up and meteors are raining down on us and people are ransacking the streets that space is still there inside us going like it's okay it's all gonna be okay i don't know how <laughs> but it is it always has been and you know so it's it's that that's the that's the quintessence i think that's actually what the modern human needs more than anything else. Cellular certainty. That one stuck with me. <laughs> I like that. And, you know, what you're speaking to is the power of the pause and the power of contemplation, which is obviously the foundation of your teachings and the gene keys and you know, the triple flame practice. I'm glad that you guys actually came out and I'm, I'm going to give you guys a plug right now just to say anybody should download the triple flame app. That thing is wonderful. It's simple, but really wonderful just to set the reminders, right? Because before what I was doing is setting them on my phone, right? It's just like a alarm clock. Now that comes in and, and just reminds me, okay, let's take a time to pause and I feel personally just from my own practice and just from sharing this work with others that that single practice is by far the most important and powerful practice for so many things most importantly just even regulating your nervous system coming back into a parasympathetic state and it's through that breath that has brought up many times through this conversation and just the power of that pause of what happens in that space so I don't know if there's anything additional you want to throw in there. I mean, you, you really went deep into that, but if there's anything else you feel called to share around that, but I just really wanted to emphasize that for somebody listening of how important that practice is. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that, Chris. I think, you know, um, I'll, I'll kind of bring it down to that, you know, simple thing as you have, you know, like pausing is, it, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful practice that anyone can do in their everyday life. And the Triple Flame, which is on the App Store, Triple Flame, um, it's free. You can download it. And, it. and we've got another version coming out soon as well, which will have a few more um, bells and whistles. But what it does is it, is it, um, it reminds you every 3, 6, 9, 12 o'clock to pause for three minutes. And you might think, oh, that's really simple. Um, and it is. Uh, but it does create a rhythm in your day that it's like a little bell that goes off. And those threes are really key to, to our, to our deep inner being, because we're built out of threes. Our, our genetics are built out of threes. Our life is built out of trinities and tiny, tiny trinities everywhere. It's just spiraling. So the code of the three is really, is really deep in us. And it's amazing how, I don't know if you get this, Christopher, but like every, um, you know, three hours comes by and then you're like, you're, you're at 12 and then suddenly it's three o'clock and you're thinking, wow, where did those three hours go? <laughs> you know, and you're, I better take three minutes and just pause for a moment because I'm just like, 
I was not very aware in those last three hours. <laughs> so, and um, and it's a real beautiful wake up call. And what you do in those three minutes, or you can extend it as long as you want, obviously, is completely up to you. You know, it's like you, you there are things in the app that gives you idea. You can listen to a thing or you can om or chant or you can just sit silently or you can do your own practice, um, whether it's breathing or anything else. Um, but those three minutes can be so precious every time they appear in your day, they become little lifelines, little pearls that you string together um, and then connect one day to the next and one day to the next. And even I, I, I wonder whether those threes go on in our dreams. I sense that they do, that there's a little ding in our dream space, even though we're in the timeless realm. Um, that there's little dings at those that 3 a.m. and that you know after midnight and then that's that I, I always wake up on the sixth one anyway. Um, so you're kind of imprinting very deep this this pulse of life of the pulse of the pause, and magic happens in pauses. Magic happens in the gaps, gaps between the atoms, the spaces between the notes. Um, you know, it's always the spaces where the transformation occurs so if we don't pause you know if we're too busy trying to attain something you know if we're too fixed on the goal and the top of the mountain then we miss our life you know i i know so many people now who got to the top you know of their career or the ladder or made a million or, or even a billion pounds dollars and and they kind of had this big realization inside them of oh my god what do i do now or or a friend of mine that's a gold medalist olympic swimmer you know it's like what do you do now he did he got that when he was 18 it's like where the hell do i go now and and so he went on a spiritual path and it's like i i just want to kind of say that to people who are like i've got this big goal because when you get there, it may be that you come right back to what I'm talking about now, which is you're just going to want to sit in the garden. And so if you're creating a beautiful garden, make sure you put benches along the way. You know, I know, again, I know many people who have beautiful gardens and homes and stuff, and they, and they never sit and hang out. <laughs> you know, they never actually stop and sit on one of those benches and just do nothing for a few minutes take their pause so it's really important to do nothing you know it's like i i always say like to my kids i say if you can't do nothing well you're not going to do anything well in life <laughs> you've got to be able to do nothing and you know so three minutes just do nothing practice nothing <laughs> if you like you know or you can practice breathing it kind of amounts to the same thing <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because it is foundation of my teaching, the art of contemplation, um, um, which is how transformation occurs naturally in these, in these gaps, in these pauses. And we can fall in love with those pauses after a while and we want to extend them, like, me, like my story of my friend and I sitting in silence. You know, you want, you want to spread them. Once you realize what's around you, once you start sitting on those benches in your garden, you, you kind of realize what you're missing. And you're like, wow, I need, you know, I mean, my wife's always like saying, come on, you know, there's stuff that we need doing. I'm like, yeah, but look at this. <laughs> like, it's a kind of game that we play. She's the doer and I'm the beer and more so anyway. And, you know, we kind of play that dance. And so sometimes that's really important to be able to just balance the being and the doing in your life and we're so fixed on doing and fixing and attaining um that we don't want to forget the being because the being is where the doing comes from so yeah i think i've said that i feel like i've said everything yeah there's there's a lot of wisdom in that and i i always really appreciate listening to you and just having this personal conversation now is because everything comes back down to simplicity, which, you know, I deeply appreciate, right? Because our world, we've made it so incredibly complex in many facets. And so coming back to these simple teachings, 
that can really propel one's life and in, into a greater dimension of being. And um, I really appreciate that deeply. So I know we're coming up on the hour here, but I just want to give you one last chance. If there's anything you feel called to share that you've left on the table, um, anything that you're um, promoting right now, I know, you know, there's a couple things that, you know, you're, you're bringing out to the world within the sphere, sphere of the gene keys and beyond. So if there's anything you feel called to share, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. I think um, I won't advertise anything here because it's been such a lovely conversation. I think, you know, if you're interested in learning more, I, I would really recommend The Art of Contemplation and you could buy my little book online, Art of Contemplation on Amazon, or there's a little course with the audio book wound into it, which is kind of a nice way into the Gene Keys. Um, so I think, yeah, and, and, and enjoy the app, you know, if you, if you did nothing else, but get that app and, and start a practice of pausing, um, three minutes, every three hours, um, I think it would be a really great, you know, I'd be like, I'd feel so honored and there's a little meter, there's a little counter, you know, isn't there on the pause meter. So it tells you how many other people are pausing yep. right now in your time zone. And so, so I have a little kind of goal of like, I'd like to get that number. I'd love to see a hundred thousand people pausing. Wouldn't that be cool on the app? I mean, at the moment we've just launched it fairly recently. So it's sort of a hundred at most. Um, but even, but even that you have, because it's in different time zones. So, you know, it depends where you are. Um, you can click into someone else's time zone, you know, off the three. So you could go. Hmm. I got 19 on my end. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you, Richard. I really appreciate it for you taking the time out to have this conversation. And yeah, there's really beautiful wisdom here that anybody, hopefully listeners, you know, received a lot. I'll link the the app and the art of contemplation just so people can receive that. And um, yeah, thank you for everything. One hundred percent. It's been the deepest work I've ever done, but you know, as somebody that um, really, I mean, I, I, my life is built on leaning into the edges, right. And going into these spaces that maybe are a little uncomfortable, but the fruits of the Venus sequence, the fruits of that work that I've done personally and what I've received of that has been insurmountable. I mean, it's been unbelievable. And the way that things are now shaping out in every aspect of my life as a result of continuously leaning into those spaces, it's yeah, it's the best work I've ever done. Personally, I always tell people, if there's one system that to go through, if you're deep into personal growth and you really want to transform and heal, like look no further, right? And I, I'm a huge proponent of the Gene Keys. So thank you. Yes, very much. Okay, beautiful. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. And um, I look forward to speaking soon. All right. Wonderful.